So far, we've been dealing with one way of thinking about probability, and that was the probability of, of A occurring is the number of events that satisfy A, number of events that satisfy A, satisfy A, over all of the equally likely events, number of equally likely events, all, and this is all of the equally likely all of the equally likely events. And so in the case of a fair coin, the probability of heads, well, it's a fair coin, so there's two equally likely events. And we're saying one of them satisfies being heads. So there's a 1 half chance of that you having a heads. Same thing for tails. If you took a, if you took a die and you said the probability of getting an even number when you roll the die, well, there's six equally likely events, and there's three even numbers you could get. You could get two, a four, or a six. So there's three even numbers. So once again, you have a 1 half chance of that happening. And this is a really good model where you have equally likely events happening. Now I'm going to change things up a little bit. So I'm going to draw a line here, because this was just one way of thinking about probability. Now we're going to introduce another one that's more helpful when we can't think about equally likely events. And in particular, I'm going to set up an unfair coin. So this right over here is going to be my unfair coin. So that is my coin. See how well I can draw the coin. So it's a gold coin this time. It is unfair. One side of that coin is a little heavier than the other. So even though it's meant to look fair, so it still has a picture of I don't know some president or something on the on one side of it. So this is the head side. This is heads, and then obviously on the back you have you have tails. But as I mentioned, this is an unfair coin, and I'm going to make an interesting statement about this unfair coin, and one that really doesn't fit into the mold that I set up over here. And this interesting statement is that we have more than a 50-50 chance of getting heads, or more than a 50% chance, or more than a 1 half chance of getting heads. I'm going to say that the probability of getting heads for this coin right over here is 60%. Or another way to say it, it's 0 0.6. Or another way to say it, it is 6 out of 10. Or another way to say it, it is 3 fifths. And this might make intuitive sense to you, and hopefully it does a little bit. But I want you to realize that this is fundamentally different than what we were saying before. Because now we can't say that there are two equally likely events. There are two possible events. You can either get heads or tails. We're assuming that the coin won't fall on its edge, that that's impossible. So you're either going to get heads and t heads or tails, but we can never we but they're not equally likely anymore. So we really can't do this kind of counting the number of events that satisfy something over all of the possible events. In this situation, in order to visualize the probability, we have to kind of take what's kind of called a frequentist approach, or think about it in terms of frequency probability. And the way to conceptualize a 60% chance of getting heads is to think if we had an a super large number of trials. If we were to just flip this coin, this is saying that if we were to flip this coin a gazillion times, we would expect that 60% of those would come up heads. It's unclear how I determined that this is 60%. Maybe I ran a computer simulation. Maybe I know exactly all of the physics of this, and I can completely model how it's going to fall every time. Or maybe it's it's I've actually just run a ton of trials. I flipped the coin a million times, and I said, wow, 60% of those, 600,000 of those came up heads. And then we can make a similar statement about tails. So if the probability of heads is 60%, the probability of tails, well, there's only two possibilities, heads or tails. So if I say the probability of heads or tails, it's going to be equal to 1. Because you're all, you're going to get one of those two things. You have a hundred percent chance of getting a heads or a tails, and these are mutually exclusive events. You can't have both of them. So this is going to be the probability of tails is going to be one hundred percent, one hundred percent minus the probability of getting heads, and this of course is sixty percent. So it's one hundred percent minus sixty percent, or forty percent or as a decimal, 0 0.4, or as a fraction, 4 tenths, or as a simplified fraction, 2 over fifths. So once again, this probability is saying, once again, we can't say, the, we can't say equally likely events. We could say that if we're going to do a gazillion of these, we would expect, as we get more and more and more trials, more and more flips, 40% of those would be heads. Now with that out of the way, let's actually do some problems with this. So let's think about the probability of getting heads on our first flip and heads on our second flip.
So once again, these are independent events. The coin has no memory. Regardless of what I got on the first flip, I have an equal chance of getting heads on the second flip. It doesn't matter if I got heads or tails on the first. So this is the probability of heads on the first flip times the probability of heads on the second flip. And we already know, probability of heads on any flip is going to be 60%. Or another way to say it, I'll write it as a decimal. It makes the math a little bit easier. 0 0.6. 0 0.6, and we can just multiply. I'll do it right over here. So this is 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. Now, it's always good to do a reality check. If I'm taking, this is one, one way to think about it, is I'm taking 6 tenths of 6 tenths. So it should be a little bit more than half of 6 tenths, so probably a little bit more than 3 tenths. And then the and we've explained this in detail where we talk about multiplying decimals, but we essentially just multiply the numbers, not thinking about the decimals at first. Six times six is thirty-six, and then you count the number of digits we have to the right of the decimal. We have one, two to the right of the decimal, so we're going to have two to the right of the decimal in our answer. So it is zero point three six, and that makes sense. We're taking sixty percent of point six. We're taking point six of point six, a little bit more than half of point six, and once again, it's a little bit more than point three. So this also makes sense. So it's zero point three six, or another way to think about it, it there's a thirty six percent probability that we get two heads in a row given this unfair coin. Remember, if it was a fair coin, it would be 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth, which is 25%. And it makes sense that this is more than that. Now let's think about a slightly more complicated example. Let's say the probability, and I'll, let's, let's say the probability of getting a tails on the first flip, getting a heads on the second flip, and then getting a tails, let me do this in a new color, and then getting a tails on the third flip. So this is going to be equal to the probability of getting a tails on the first flip, because these are all independent events. Having one event, if you know that has a, you got a tail on the first flip, that doesn't affect the probability of getting a, a heads on the second flip. So times the probability of getting a heads on the second flip. And then that's times the probability of getting a tails on the third flip. Times the probability of tails on the third flip. And the probability of getting a tails on any flip we know is 0 0.4. The probability of getting a heads on any flip, probability of heads on any flip is is 0 0.6. And then the probability of getting a tails on any flip is 0.4, is equal to 0.4. And so once again, we can just multiply these. So 0.4 times 0.6. So if we multiply, if we multiply. 0.4 times 0.6, there's actually a couple of ways we can think about it. Well, we could literally say, look, we're multiplying 4 times 6 times 4, and then we have three numbers behind the decimal point. So let's do it that way. 4 times 6 is 24. 24, 24 times 4 is 96. So we, it gives us, it's, we get 9, we write a 9, 6, but remember, we have three numbers behind the decimal point. So it's 1, one behind the, to the right of the decimal there, one to the right of the decimal there, one to the right of the decimal there. So three to the right. So we need three to the right of the decimal in our answer. So one, two, we need one more to the right of the decimal. So our answer is 0 0.096. Or another way to think about it is, write an equal sign here, this is equal to a 9.6% chance. So there's a little bit less than a 10% chance, or a little bit less than 1 in 10 chance of when we flip this coin three times, us getting exactly a tails on the first flip, a heads on the second flip, and a tails on the third flip.